morning, Redeemer Church. Uh, Pastor Scott here with a daily encouragement for you. And we know very little about what's to come in the new normal after these COVID-19 containment measures pass by. About one third of the world's population has been put under some form of lockdown, uh, quarantine measures. And one of the things that's happened that probably will continue in some way after all of this has passed by is that that containment, that quarantine has led so much of our daily lives into something like this, a face on a screen, Zoom calls, virtual meetings. This has become a new normal for us and probably will continue past these days as everyone has started to put them into their lives and will probably still maintain some sort of social distance, work from home, remote engagement with one another. We probably will be on Zoom calls, I'm sorry to say it, for the rest of our lives. And there's things about that that we can praise the Lord for, the flexibility to be at home. I mean, who can who can imagine the last few weeks without the ability to just at least see some of our friends and our and our colleagues through these means? We can praise the Lord for these technologies. And already in the last few weeks, so we've started to see some of the limitations of virtual communication. You know, virtual literally means almost as described. It's not a real thing. It's something like a real thing. And you've probably even started to feel some of the limitations of, of virtual meetings, maybe emotionally or physically. I've heard Zoom fatigue is the fatigue that happens, the emotional weariness that takes place as we spend so much of our day staring into the same camera with different kinds of interactions happening through the same means. It causes our brain to be tired. Zoom neck uh, is a physical uh, impact, a negative physical impact of these calls because we're trying to keep our head right in the exact position so we get our best angle on all of these calls and at the end of the day our neck hurts. Well, whether emotionally or physically, there are downsides to these things, to these virtual communications, the distance that we feel relationally, where rather than being reminded of the relationships that we so much enjoy, we are actually more so reminded of the absence of people from our lives. Well, without elevating the, the possibilities of virtual communication beyond what they are, without complaining about the negative impacts of virtual communication, how can we as the people of God go before Him and, and seek His wisdom and His grace for how to use virtual communication for His glory? Well, one way is through prayer. I don't know about you, but I've been blessed over time by books like The Valley of Vision, where saints from the past have written down their prayers from various times and on various topics. And as I go there, I find words for my own thoughts and help and structure for my own prayers. And, and so while I'm not submitting this to some sort of modern book of prayer, I do want to offer you a prayer that I wrote, a liturgy for those about to Zoom. And I hope that you can take it and, and make it your own. And perhaps before you get on that next Zoom call, Pray to the Lord, asking for His guidance as you, as you grip for some form of reality through this imperfect means. So here is a liturgy for those about to Zoom. I'll pray it now for this camera, and then again we'll post it in the notes as we post the video, and you can take it and make it your own. A liturgy for those about to Zoom. Heavenly Father, in you, the maker of heaven and earth, is the meaning and closeness that we seek. With a voice you spoke the world into being, with dirt you formed us, and with your breath we have life. Your son Jesus came to us as a man, bringing salvation and giving us hope of a life to come in which there will be no separation, no distance, no sense of partition between heaven and earth, but only nearness and reconciliation under the supremacy of Christ as he wipes away every tear from our eye and leads us to streams of living water. We know one day all things will be brought near in him. What an age we live in, O oh God, that even during a time of great global suffering, we can experience the grace of technology that allows us to see one another from a distance, to share in conversation and to pray together. Phone calls and text messages, WhatsApps and emails, Zooms and video meetings. Lord, we thank you for these simple gifts. And yet in these days, as they've become not only supplements to our relationships, but the sustainment of them, Lord, you know we are feeling the weariness of the distance. 
we are not actually in touch, but we're separated. Most of our interactions are constrained and lacking. We are lonely and long for our friends to be with us and not simply talking at us. We are eager to help and we grieve the distance that keeps us from serving. We are sad and do not feel the comfort of companionship through a screen. We are rejoicing and yet find coldness to the well-meaning attempts at warm smiles from afar. O oh, Father, just as in love Christ came to the world in a physical body, incarnated fully as man, we long to be with others. To experience work relationships that are not merely transactional but full of camaraderie, to delight in brothers and sisters that are not on a screen as entertainers but at a table as friends. Would you help us, Lord, by your Spirit to feel the nearness of Christ to us, realizing that he is always with us, to engage this next video call in our calendar with a zeal to serve others well through this imperfect means, to be content with what takes place, that we would not be frustrated by less productive meetings, and that we would not be disappointed by lesser encouragement that only comes with words from a distance and not from alongside with an arm over the shoulder. Would by your Spirit we also be led to the ways in which these virtual interactions may be useful for your mission for the gospel to go out to all peoples. O oh Lord, give us an opportunity to speak to those we may not otherwise have gotten in contact with, that they may hear of Jesus and believe. And Lord, help us long for the new heavens and earth, where our longings for nearness will come to an end as we dwell forever as your children, brought together by the love of the Lamb. Amen.